back working on stuff and this is my 96 sea Dew Speedster. If you've got one of these old boats, you probably know like me how cool it is. I mean, they're just an absolute blast to drive. They pull great. And we've in fact had this boat for 20 years. Uh, it's been through two kids, pulled those since they were babies and taken out countless friends of theirs. Now the wife and I just cruise around in it for the most part. But one thing I gotta ask you is, How's your acceleration? Is it absolutely just throw you back in the seat, flawless, no uh, hesitation, no cavitation? Should look just like this. And if it doesn't, I can help you. My first one of these speedsters was a 95 model and while it was set up pretty much like this it was like first or second year they'd been making the speedsters and it had some issues the main one was the water intake for the pumps it had one intake in the center of the boat and then it wide out and fed both of the jet pumps and that simply did not work right one engine was always trying to cavitate. It was sucking air while the other one was pulling more water. Sea Dew even went so far as to put different pitched impellers on both sides trying to help this problem out, but it just didn't work. I messed around with it for a year or two and finally ended up selling that one and then getting this 96 because they knew they had a problem. This one has separate intakes, completely separate intakes for each engine and jet pump. And that helped a bunch. I knew from uh, research that they had changed that, so I went out and bought a 96, and I bought it used, but the problem was I took it out on the water and it cavitated just as bad as the old one. I went to all this trouble and it's no better, so then I got to researching and did some looking and comparing it to my 95, and what they did was yes they went to the twin intakes but they also changed the driveline seat. They went from a double sealed with a needle bearing support in the middle to a carbon ring with a seal butted up against that. And when under full acceleration, as heavy as these boats are and as much power as these motors make, it would suck air in between that carbon seal and the ring. And then you'd have cavitation over again. So they fixed one problem and introduced another one. And I understand why they went with the carbon ring because the older style required maintenance. And I just don't think people were doing maintenance on it. And, you know, the bearings get rusty. They lock up and cause problems. The carbon seal was completely, you know, maintenance free. But at the sacrifice of performance. So number one, you've got to check and make sure that your impellers and your wear rings are good. If those are good and you've still got the carbon seals and you're still having acceleration issues or it's just not pulling like you think it should, then it's a good idea to retrofit back to the other ones. Now, I'll show you what you gotta do. Well, I'm not gonna take it apart, but it's real easy. If you can pull the pumps, you can change this over because it's really nothing to it. All right, this section here is what gets replaced. If you've got the stock equipment, this piece here will be an accordion style hose with a black carbon piece in here and then the uh, stainless steel plate that goes against that. So you want to pull the pump, pull the drive shaft out, take all that out, get a solid piece of hose, either from c or from the auto parts store, and then this housing here that has uh, two seals on the back and one seal on the front and a needle bearing in between. And there is a groove that has some C-clips on the shaft that hold that stainless steel plate in there. I used to fill that full of JB weld and smooth it out, but if you just adjust the hose to the right length to where that seal is behind that groove, you're fine. Because it'll slide right through and don't cause any problems. But this right here should fix your cavitation. I'll put some part numbers in the video description. I think all this stuff is still available from c -Dew, and they had the best setup, but there are some aftermarket companies that make um, replacement parts that work just as well. But yeah, it is definitely a worthwhile endeavor to change that. 
The only problem is you do need to keep it greased. I usually, every couple of trips out, give it a few squirts of grease. Definitely pack it full before you store it for winter to make sure it doesn't rust. And this cover here extends over this originally. I cut the cover back so I can grease that without issue. And that also lets me grease the uh, PTO there. But do not just take the cover off completely. Because if you ever do get water in the uh, engine bay, even if it's not very deep, the PTO under this cover will sling it right up into your air box. Ask me how I know. So, just cut it back to where it still covers the PTO. You should be fine. Um, just make sure to grease it. And that's about all there is to it. It's a really good mod. Anything speedster-wise, if you think of anything, any videos that you'd want me to make, just drop a line in the comment. Like I said, I've had this boat for a long time. I pretty much know everything about it. So, till next time.